The tenth in the series on simultaneous equations introduces Cramer's rule. The previous videos then demonstrated that in principle a matrix inverse is straightforward to define. The matrix inverse can then be used to solve linear simultaneous equations. So analytically, this is a very simple approach. However, the computation of the matrix inverse using cofactors and a determinant is computationally highly demanding and inefficient. And really, we want some better alternatives. This video will introduce Cramer's rule, which is efficient, and I've got to emphasize this, for some cases, and therefore worth knowing. Let's remind ourselves of the basics then. So we want to solve linear simultaneous equations which we've represented in this matrix form AX equals B. We're going to assume a solution exists so the determinant of A is not zero but we don't want to use the matrix inverse so we don't want to write X equals A inverse B because finding A inverse is tedious. Kramer's rule is good for low dimensional problems so really if x is dimension 2 or 3 or perhaps 4 and or where you only want to solve for a single unknown so you don't want to solve for the entire vector x but maybe you just need one of the components. Let's remind ourselves then of how we solve two equations in two unknowns. Now this slide we've covered earlier, so we'll do it very quickly. We use standard approaches like multiply the first equation by d and the second by b, subtract, and then we get a solution for x. Or multiply equation 1 by c and 2 by a and subtract. And you'll see we get these well-known solutions which were covered in the previous two videos. And it was also noted that a unique solution exists if and only if the denominator ad minus bc is not equal to zero. So this is just a reminder because you'll see we've got these two expressions up here and we want you to be confident where they've come from. Now we're going to take these two simultaneous equations and we're going to arrange them in this augmented matrix form. You can see the coefficients of x, a and c are the first column, the coefficients of y, b and d are the second column and the constants are the third column. And now what we want to ask is which determinants will give the terms that we need to solve for x and y. So we'll show you here now. <coughs> In order to solve for x, we've got this term ED minus BF in the numerator. Now we can get ED minus BF from this determinant expression here. You can see a a matrix made of B, E and D and F, but also please notice this minus sign. We can get the term A, F minus E, C from this determinant here. So you can see. And finally, we can get A, D minus B, C from this determinant here. Now what we want you to look at is these three determinants are all based on this augmented matrix by deleting a different column. So in order to get the x, we deleted the first column. In order to get the y, we deleted the second column. And in order to get the uh, denominator term, we deleted the third column. So let's expand on this. So for the 2 by 2 case, there's a simple link between the 2 by 3 augmented matrix of coefficients and the solutions for x and y. So delta x is given by this determinant here, e, the determinant of e, b, f, d. Delta y is the determinant a of the matrix a, e, c, f. And delta is the determinant of the matrix a, b, c, d. And you can see that x is given by delta x over delta, and y is given by delta y over delta. So that's the same as the previous slide. What's the key thing to look at? Well, if we look, I'll use blue here, at the delta y term, and then we go to this augmented matrix, you can see what we've done is deleted the second column. And the second column was the coefficients that go with y. So that seems to make sense. If we look at the constants, we've deleted the constant column. 
So you say, OK, to get the delta associated to the constants, I delete the constant comma. To get the delta associated to the y, I delete the coefficients of the y. That all seems to make sense. But now, when I look at this delta x, and you say, all right, so if I delete the coefficients linked to the x, you see those two are not the same. The columns are in the wrong order. So what is it I need to do to define this delta x? And so am I missing something simple? So we'll explain this on the next slide. Each column of the original augmented matrix is associated to a specific coefficient. So the first column for the first coefficient, the second column for the second coefficient, and so on. And what we do, in fact, is we to define delta x, we replace the column of x coefficients with the column of constants. And you'll notice there's a subtle difference here. We've used the word replace. We didn't say delete the column of x coefficients. We said replace the column of x coefficients with the constants. So here you can see what we're going to do. Essentially, we're going to take this column of constant coefficients and we're going to put them in here. So we're going to get rid of this a, get rid of this c, and replace them by e and f. So this will now, the determinant of this will now give you delta x. Now, in order to define delta y, we use an exactly analogous technique. So if I delete this so we can see it, what we've got to do is replace, here's the key word, replace the column of y coefficients with a column of constants. So I get rid of the coefficients related to the y and replace them by the coefficients from the constant. And then you see what we're going to do is we're going to get this here, the determinant of A, E, C, F, and that will give me delta y. Now we can also do this for a 3x3 three three matrix and you'll see it's a general rule. So here's some three linear simultaneous equations. <coughs> now in order to find just the delta, all I do is take this left-hand matrix, the A, so that's the easy one. Now, what happens if I want to get the delta x? Well, I replace the first column with the constant coefficients. So essentially, I cross the A, I cross the D, I cross the G, and I put in place K, M, N. And you can see that's what we've got here. So we replace the first column with the constant coefficients. Now, what happens if I want to get the coefficients linked to the y? Well, I use exactly the same technique. Now, I replace the coefficients linked to the y again with the constant coefficients. So you see the key word is replace all the time and now we get the delta y. And similarly, if we wanted to get the delta z, we'd replace the third column with the coefficients. So in summary, if you have three equations, then x is given as delta x over delta, y is given as delta y over delta, z is given as delta z over delta. So the key point to notice is you can solve for one coefficient at a time. So if you, for example, only wanted y, all you need to do is calculate delta and delta y. So that's just two determinants. And we know that we can solve determinants fairly efficiently. And this is where Kramer's rule can be very useful. If you just want one coefficient, for example, you can do it very quickly. Now, it's assumed that you can see extensions to higher dimensions are obvious, but the key point is it would rarely be used in practice. So Kramer's rule is certainly good for 2x2, two two, perhaps OK for 3x3. Three three. Once you get to 4x4, four four, it would be used rarely and above, I think, hardly ever. Because the computation of determinants is still fairly inefficient, and if you want to get x, y, z, w, and so on, you've got too many determinants to do. So this is just a reminder of the key solutions with a different um, set of coefficients. So you can see we take these equations here, a1, b1, c1, z equals d1, a2, x, b2, y plus c2, z equals d2, and a3, x plus b3, y plus c3, z equals d3. And if we want to solve for x, y, and z, we just write down x equals dx over d, where d is defined here. You can see it's taken just from the coefficients of x, y, and z. dx is here, 
and you can see again we've just replaced the first column the A's now with the constants the D's if we want DY you can see we've replaced the second column and if we want DZ you see we've replaced the third column so let's look at a numerical illustration so here's three equations you might want to solve so the first thing to do is to find the determinant of the coefficients of the variables so you can see I've got coefficients 1, 1 and 1 on the top I've put those there 1, minus 1, 1 here I've put those coefficients there and 4, 2 and 1 there and I've put those coefficients there so that gives me the delta which in this case is 6 now if I want to solve for x I need delta x so what I'm going to do is take these coefficients the minus 2, the 0 and the 3 and you'll see put them in the first column. So that's all I've done. So now I've found the determinant of that and I won't waste your time doing that slowly. I'm just going to tell you the answer. It's 12 and that gives me delta x. So now I've used d's here instead of delta so it's a bit clumsy isn't it? So now I can write x is 12 over 6 which is 2. Now I don't need to solve for y and z I've got x anyway but if I want to I can use these expressions to find y and z and I've given you the answers here so if you want to do it in your own time just pause the video so you can write the numbers down carefully and see if you get the correct answers. So in summary this brief resource introduced Kramer's rule for solving linear simultaneous equations. And Kramer's rule has the advantage of giving explicit formula for each unknown coefficient in terms of the variables. For low numbers of equations, two or three, it can be very efficient. However, for high numbers of equations, it's likely to be an inefficient approach.